Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Mohamed Shawaf, an assistant professor at uh, Kuwait University in the Department of uh, Environmental Technology Management. I would like to start off by thanking the Kuwait Foundation for the advancement of sciences, for this opportunity, and for always being ahead of the curve on matters regarding science, business, and society. I have the pleasure of sharing this session, uh, um, which we think uh, you'll find very interesting. We certainly have a, an interesting panel. Joining us today are uh, Dr. Sam Poglo from the Australian College of Kuwait and Dr. Sultan Salim from the Kuwait Institute uh, of Scientific Research. Our guests will share their perspectives uh, on the issues of bridging the gap between academia and industrial sectors. The setup will be as follows. I will give a quick introduction regarding the topic, and then our panel, uh, our panel will get a chance to introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about uh, their background, experiences, or expertise, and then I will start the discussion with our panel. <clears throat> followed by, inshallah, uh, Q&A. And may I remind everyone, if they have any questions, just go to the chat section or chat box and put your questions uh, there. And inshallah, we'll try our best to answer all of them. <clears throat> the university industry collaboration has always been an important but a complex one, and a complex topic. Despite having uh, different goals and objectives, they also have complementary skill sets. The university industry collaborations foster knowledge, creation and transfer, research and innovation, and the commercialization of R&D results, um, all of which aim to innovate solutions, uh, all of which to, uh, aim to deliver innovative solutions to meet the demand of society or markets in a highly competitive environment. While the needs and advantages of such collaborations have been recognized, yet many organizations still find it difficult to encourage and establish collaborations. At times, the private sector shies away from leveraging universities and research institutions to carry, to carry out even the basic research that, we, that they will contribute, uh, that they will uh, contribute to their development. We are here today to shed the light on the nature of such collaboration, its challenges, opportunities, maybe misconceptions for, from both uh, parties involved. Dr. Sam and Dr. Sultan, welcome and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. And before we start, I would like to remind everyone to write their questions um, in the chat box uh, or uh, the chat room. And inshallah, our uh, team uh, will handle and uh, uh, collect the questions for the end. Um, I would like to start with Dr. Sam. The first question I have for you is, how do you define collaborations between the private sector and the academia? And what are the potential types of such collaborations? Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. I would like to thank also KFAS for giving us this opportunity to talk about uh, this interesting topic. In fact, uh, through my uh, past experience in uh, dealing with the industry, I found there are many opportunities of collaboration with the industry, not only research, a mutual technical research or academic research that will support uh, the industry in one way or another. But there are many ways that we can look at it, especially that the industry, in fact, uh, is dynamic and it, it faces technical problems in every project they come across. And what a wonderful collaboration would be in case the, these uh, problems, or I'll call it projects or cases, have been taken as a case study for an academic body to collaborate actually with the industry and find a mutual solution for it. So uh, uh, something like uh, that would uh, consolidate a proper collaboration between uh, the academia and the industry. Apart from that, definitely, uh, talking about, for example, uh, mutual training for you know, academics teaching or training, uh, you know, industry specialists or vice versa. Those are in the industry. They, in fact, train academics or uh, uh, communicate their practical experience to them. 
you can add to that, for example, internship programs. You can add to that uh, uh, site visits. There might many ways of collaboration that we can see it possible. Thank you, Dr. Sam. I have one more question for you, a quick uh, question regarding you are an academic, I'm an academic, and when you read the mission statement for a university, do you think it should involve something regarding participating research with the uh, industrial sector? Because most of the mission statements focus on society, um, creation of knowledge, uh, and maybe some research. But it's rarely, I mean, as long as uh, I know, uh, there's not much focus on that much collaboration between the industrial and the academic sector. Do you think the universities should change their mission statements? Uh, well, I think uh, uh, some mission statements, they embed, you know, uh, the uh, links with the industry. Now, I wouldn't hide the secret. It's, it's a requirement for any accredited uh, uh, university to have links uh, with the industry. But, for example, the Imperial uh, College in London has uh, given for, you know, very interesting uh, examples with, I mean, when I read about them, just more than 500 companies, they have been dealing with them over a, a good period of time. So uh, now, most universities, they talk about how we can have our applied knowledge. That underpinning knowledge that's been taken in the schools or universities, it has to be applied in one way or another. So definitely, uh, phrasing it, it could be, you know, uh, a different flavor from one university to the other, but it's going to be definitely embedded within their mission statement. Thank you. Dr. Sultan, I'm familiar with your research, uh, which I think is an excellent uh, research. What do you think about, and, or how do you define the, the collaboration between the private sector and the, the, uh, the research or academic sector? Right. Dr. Sultan? Right, thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed, for that lovely introduction. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Science uh, for providing such a platform to discuss a very important and a very dear topic to me personally. Uh, regarding your question, uh, I myself would like to maybe emphasize and focus on the technical aspects of it and maybe uh, shed light on some of the sort of uh, hidden uh, points uh, that would define such a collaboration with the private sector, especially when it comes with R&D institutes or academic institutes in general. Uh, I believe one major sort of uh, a gap that uh, R&D and sort of uh, technical sort of input could be in problem solving for the private industry. Private industry run lots and various sort of industrial uh, schemes and uh, industrial uh, plants and businesses all over. Uh, so they do face such a, an angle on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, definitely academia, R&D could be a problem solving sort of strategy. Uh, not to mention the fact that R&D could be sponsored by the private sector. This technology nourishment from lab, bench, uh, all the way to semi, pilot, pilot, and probably industrial scale could be all the way uh, nourished by uh, uh, the private industry, uh, especially heavy industries in the private sector. Uh, of course, there is also the uh, human sort of relation angle when you develop ongoing relations with the private sector. There is always studentships, job opportunities and job creation by the private industry, which is a very important angle. Nowadays, you see universities, uh, R&D institutes, uh, uh, private laboratories sometimes, and even public uh, laboratories uh, uh, in the uh, North American uh, 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 sort of academic circles, they have this link with the private industry and the private sector where they create jobs, not only sort of fill in jobs. They would have uh, sort of sponsored a number of students back and forth. Uh, they have certain majors they would like uh, to be focused on, whether it is an applied science or in technology or abstract sciences as well. So uh, I believe such uh, sort of angles would be uh, the major ones uh, 
between the private uh, industry and academia. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Sultan. Um, before we move on to the next question, um, uh, I'd like to remind our guests uh, to, uh, and I think we're taking questions already, and while we are taking questions, I would like to take this uh, uh, opportunity to get to know our guests uh, more. Uh, Dr. Sam, would you like to tell us more about your background, your research, and expertise? Uh, I'm an assistant professor in uh, entrepreneurship and marketing. I have been, in fact, uh, dealing with the industry for the last, say, 25 years. I have worked in Kuwait, uh, Australia, and the Gulf. And uh, I've been also in some academic roles in the last uh, 10 years Also, I've been the manager for the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Australian College of Kuwait, and I've been the dean for the School of Business for two years. So this is in brief what Sam is. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Um, well, I'm a chemical engineer by training. I'm the program manager at the moment for the environmental pollution and climate program. I'm also uh, a research scientist that's a senior level scientist at the Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research. Uh, I've also um, supervised and still am supervising uh, three facilities uh, that are very dear to me uh, in waste management, uh, which is a majority of my research. Uh, I, I like to think of myself as a reactor design kinetics uh, sort of uh, specialist in that area. Um, majority of the funds that I manage in R&D are uh, from the private sector, actually, uh, whether it is from inside uh, local sort of uh, Kuwait uh, or uh, international bodies as well. Uh, so yeah, that's me in brief. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sultan. Um, that takes me to the next question, and that's uh, 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 for you, Dr. Sultan. Um, it's mainly regarding, you know, your opinion regarding the value of collaborations between the academia and. Doc, you, Dr. Sultan, you as a researcher in Kisser, how do you, or how could you, how could the private sector nourish laboratory and scale up operations all the way to market? Since now you mentioned they have uh, uh, pilot plans regarding uh, waste management, would you like to elaborate on that? Please? Yes. Um, well, basically, the value is immense. Uh, the private industry or the private sector in general could basically sponsor technologies from the uh, conception of the idea. That's whenever a private sort of company would sponsor a laboratory, a program, uh, aid in executing projects, or even develop labs uh, with scientists. Hence, that technology, that technique could be nourished from the bench all the way to the industry. Such collaboration is quite valuable, in fact, and uh, it's getting to be more and more. I'm not saying it wasn't there before, but it's getting to be more and more uh, sort of popular uh, in academic circles and in, especially in R&D. Uh, one thing to focus on, really, is uh, the, the role uh, of the private sector in such uh, a relationship, if it were, uh, uh, as it were. Uh, if um, a private industry is, for example, running high-tech equipment and they need the problem-solving angle, so there is that relationship back and forth with a certain academic institute or a research institute uh, or a public laboratory. And with that, such ideas could uh, uh, develop. Of course, there are various routes, such as MOUs and uh, technical sort of projects and concepts and concept pre-proposal notes and uh, publications that could be shared, uh, white papers, uh, all of those the private industry could actually uh, sort of contribute to uh, immensely. Great. Um, again, with Dr. Sultan, being a researcher in Kisser, uh, which deals with the private sector directly, and you as a researcher uh, who works with pilot plants, um, uh, we're interested at what level does the private sector involve, gets involved with the research? Do they, or do they get involved at early stages or at 
the final stages where it's the technologist transfer or anything else. Um, mainly, we would like to know the type of engagement between uh, Kisser and uh, the private sector, if you can shed the light on Right. That. Um, basically, the engagement could be at any level throughout the cycle of executing an R&D project. But ideally, it will be from the conception, meaning the fund could be managed mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, directly from the private sector through the proper channels. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the institute is also a governmental body, so there are the proper channels to uh, uh, lead that, uh, as it were. However, that is in a very ideal situation. Sometimes the private industry might get into technology transfer stage. Uh, they might be interested in a certain project or the results of a certain project and would like to probably get into the second phase or the implementation of uh, a certain project in real life uh, scenario or a different uh, environment. So it's really sort of variable. Uh, however, in an ideal situation, uh, some of the projects I personally ran uh, are uh, from the get-go, meaning that the private uh, industry is an actual fund uh, stakeholder mm -hmm. in the technology or uh, they actually fund that research project from the conception and that's a very ideal situation uh, also for the private industry itself or the private sector they will have ownership uh, or a partial ownership of that technology or the results or, or whatever uh, there is also another angle that R&D institutes, uh, I'm sure that uh, universities have the same, where we actually not just a problem serve, uh, solve, but we actually serve in terms of conducting, conducting technical services and consultancies. So there will be consultancies with uh, private industry, uh, sample analysis, uh, program development, uh, these are typically called technical services that we do directly to the private sector. Thank you, Dr. Sultan. Um, Dr. Sam, uh, regarding uh, that point, which is uh, uh, your opinion regarding uh, the value of collaborations between the private and uh, uh, the academic sector. Well, knowledge transfer is definitely the prime value. Of, of having that collaboration. Uh, definitely there is a lot of experience uh, lies in both uh, parties. So the industry has its own practical hands-on experience and the academia has its own technical underpinning knowledge that drives in, for, in fact this experience to the right way. So the first thing I think about is just how the value comes from uh, this collaboration based on uh, the transfer of knowledge. Now, some universities have started something, as Dr. Sultan said, to work on mutual funded projects. And I think this could be facilitated by technical or tech technology transfer offices or TTOs. And they, they work on, in fact, uh, implementing whatever uh, tested or uh, uh, discussed or even uh, practiced in the university uh, and at that level to uh, be implemented in the industry. So I think uh, there are many uh, benefits uh, for uh, such a collaboration. Uh, definitely I see there is also a possibility of uh, transferring, uh, in fact, uh, practical knowledge uh, on both sides. So it's a two-way scenario rather than it's a one-way. Thank you. And um, moving on to the next point, and I'm uh, directing this, this question to Dr. Sam, is uh, what, what have been your experiences in the past or involvements in such collaborations? Well, uh, within the Australian College of Kuwait, as you see, and you know, probably we have adopted the uh, project-based learning approach uh, several years ago, and we have collaborated with Alborg University in Denmark, which they have a uh, pioneer model in this uh, uh, applied education, uh, I'll probably say. And uh, through that, uh, the curriculum has changed uh, to include project-based learning units. 
And with these ones, we adopt also something similar to the CDIO model or what we call it the design thinking approach. And with this, the students uh, form groups and with these groups, they work on a uh, industry related problem or a project and they try to find a solution for it uh, or contribute to the solution for it within say 15 weeks of study. Uh, for example, personally I worked with my students on, as I'm in the School of Business, we worked on cases where uh, in the industry they find it challenging. For example, if you heard about Al Yal Mall, uh, which is very close to Al Kut Mall, uh, if you take it from the perspective of uh, business competition, Definitely Al Yal Mall is competing with the giant there called Al Kut because it has attracted a lot of customers and foot traffic uh, for many years. So how can Al Yal Mall, for example, compete and drag traffic to it, although they are so close to each other? Definitely uh, there are many innovative ways that uh, the management can think about to distinguish themselves and find uh, a differentiation. Uh, element for their uh, mall in order to attract uh, uh, business and maintain uh, that business and make it sustainable. We have worked also on another project with the, it's a similar project, but it's in fact with the Bolivard and everybody knows the Bolivard. It is a unique project in Kuwait because of its huge park that is available with open, in fact, lakes. Uh, it's a beautiful place for people to walk, but do they really shop there and how much they shop? Uh, that challenge for the management was in fact explored by our students in uh, marketing planning and strategy uh, courses where they have compared the foot traffic with the Sug El Salmiya or the city center which is next door to it and uh, you've got to find ways you know to attract people or have anchor stores for example to uh, drag traffic to the uh, Bolivar and make people in fact consider uh, buying. That challenge is enjoyable from the student's perspective. Also the results and conclusions are much more appreciated by the client because they see different opinions coming from either uh, young, for example, uh, uh, capabilities uh, trying to contribute that or through our doctors and uh, specialists who are working with these students on the same project. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Um, Dr. Sultan, would you mind please uh, sharing with us uh, your experience or involvements in uh, um, private and uh, academic or research uh, collaborations? Yes, well, um, the examples are many, but I would like to really focus on two major sort of success stories uh, or success, uh, successful projects uh, that I personally have conducted uh, with the private industry here in Kuwait. Uh, the first was uh, with um, Equate Petrochemical Company and also KFAS, uh, where basically an idea was presented uh, regarding the study of mechanically recycled blends with the aim of uh, sort of substituting certain products on the market or the local Kuwaiti market. Uh, that project uh, led to development of know-how, uh, publishing uh, technical information that is quite uh, new and novel, uh, especially when it comes to the physical and the mechanical characterization of uh, the behavior of uh, plastic solid waste under harsh environments. Uh, some of the products we were trying to develop are aimed to be used outdoors so there was the weathering element as well, uh, studying laboratory controlled conditions against uh, natural environments. Uh, that project uh, was successful, it was a prolonged uh, project as well, uh, with, as I said, two major funds, one was from KFAS and the other one was from Equate. Uh, the second project was uh, with KISA, Equate, also petrochemical company, and uh, Uni uh, University of Swansea at the UK. Uh, that project was uh, specifically aimed at uh, uh, studying thermal uh, sort of degressive behavior of waste in Kuwait, which led to the development of uh, sort of uh, uh, various modeling uh, or models 
to design reactors for uh, fuel from waste sort of techniques, especially in at gas uh, thermolysis, commonly known as pyrolysis. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so these two success stories basically uh, were uh, sort of um, the low hanging fruit and have led also to the collaboration of developing a very recent uh, MOU uh, between ourselves at uh, KISA and uh, the private industry in Kuwait, uh, formulated uh, as a consortium uh, by Equate as well, and also with a private uh, company in the UK, Polymateria, which is a very commonly, uh, a common name, uh, household name as well, as they consult and produce lots of uh, biodegradable plastics. So uh, it all integrated at the end uh, with the private sector, uh, with those success stories. Uh, but what I would actually sort of uh, conclude from all of that is the fact that with these ongoing projects that took about seven years of execution, uh, more or less, yeah, probably on the more side, actually. Uh, you develop the strong relationship with the private industry in Kuwait and even abroad. And uh, there is, as I said earlier on, there is uh, always the technical relationship between labs, uh, technical relationship between the two entities. Uh, in this case, it would be Kisser uh, on one hand and the private fund from the second uh, sort of angle which could be KFAS, Equate, or what have you. And bit by bit, that relationship is nourished uh, till you get the end result. Good. Thank you, Dr. Sultan. And I think now we're familiar with the benefits uh, from uh, such collaborations. Um, but I would like to switch to the following point. Um, and I would like to combine uh, two points uh, together, which are, in your opinion, with few words, what have been the challenges that you faced dealing with the private sector? And what have been the misconceptions uh, when it comes to collaborations, uh, whether with the academic, uh, the private industry, the private university, uh, the private sector university, or the private sector and research institutes? So what have been the challenges and misconceptions. Uh, I'd like to uh, forward that question to Dr. Sam first. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mohammed. In fact, uh, I, I can start with at least the trust and confidence that this collaboration is going to work. This is a challenge that sometimes uh, you find, like, for example, a, a passionate start, and then, you, you know, things will wind down, and uh, it needs a bit of uh, a charge in order to maintain in fact, the passion for this commitment. There should be, as uh, Dr. Sultan mentioned, uh, we have to develop that relationship and the network uh, with the industry in order to build these kind of strong uh, uh, channels of communication and, and uh, confidence that uh, that collaboration will uh, bring up fruits. Uh, second, I think uh, the uh, adoption of the top management to this collaboration should be, in fact, the motivating factor for the success of that. And what I mean by adoption, that they allocate resources that could be financial, uh, it could be human resources, that they, in fact, uh, uh, follow up on, on that collaboration to make it really successful towards the end. So these are some of the, in fact, uh, uh, challenges that I, I think they could be probably uh, faced. As you said, conceptions, misconceptions definitely as related to whether we're gonna you know, uh, have something coming out of this collaboration or not. See, I believe there are, uh, the industry has a lot of uh, challenges related to efficiency. And what I mean by efficiency is doing you know, uh, the uh, thing with the minimum waste. So in this case, uh, there are some resources are wasted Definitely the uh, market uh, has a lot to say on that, but uh, the academia also can tell you uh, many techniques how to tackle uh, these, uh, in fact, uh, resources and minimize. With uh, you know Six Sigma, for example, or other types of uh, quality control measures, there is a, a rich, fertile soil to apply this on 
any process in the industry and see how we can help the industry, for example, or a company or a business to reduce, in fact, uh, waste in, on certain processes and uh, increase their efficiency. So uh, that's what I can probably add to this point. Thank you. Dr. Sultan, what have been the challenges that you faced or, or misconceptions? Right, well, uh, uh, that's a very tricky one, but uh, what I would like to say is basically <laughs> I've shared some of the success stories, uh, some of the success stories with the private industry. Uh, and now I'm probably going to shed light on some of the sort of misconceptions as well. Uh, without naming names, of course, but there is also the the, the idea of the private industry has a different sort of timeline than some academic or R&D institutes in general. Uh, technical problems need to be solved in their own time. There is lab time. There is quality control in the lab. Uh, there is also the issue of uh, some of the uh, auditing and bureaucratic channels that there are so these are all sort of um, some of the factors that probably would drive the private industry uh, in terms of difference in timelines between uh, academic institutes in general or the private industry in general as well or the private sector uh, there is also the problem of the f actual fund uh, the private sector would expect a very quick return on their investment and as i said r d doesn't always lead to the expected results uh, these projects uh, are executed with the aim of finding uh, certain uh, properties or uh, uh, developing a certain design uh, but that uh, is not always successful as it is the nature of all scientific projects uh, so that fact needs also to be clarified at the early stages, especially with the small businesses, uh, as it were. Uh, there is also the problem, actually, of uh, anticipating end results too quickly. Uh, some of the projects I mentioned, uh, or probably uh, I, I failed to mention, uh, take about 30 to 36 months of continuous execution. Uh, not all the companies are willing to uh, sort of uh, wait for that uh, time uh, for you to do your experiments and wait on some uh, field work or some laboratory work. Uh, uh, there are problems during the project as well. Uh, so all of these are sort of hindering factors uh, or challenges, as it were, uh, with the uh, private fund or the private uh, sector in general. Uh, but as I said, uh, everything um, in life in general and especially in R&D in more specifics not always rosy so these challenges are very much so yes. expected great thank you now um, in your point of view um, and this is of course for both our, our guests and I would like to start with uh, Dr. Sam um, what are some of the ways in which universities uh, research institutions can, can um, narrow the gap uh, in, in such collaborations? Uh, good question, in fact, because uh, we had a similar experience in uh, or attempts uh, to narrow that gap by building bridges, actually, with the industry, uh, making, for example, uh, 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 committees where uh, we meet, in fact, with the industry on a periodical basis, uh, finding opportunities of collaboration through uh, uh, bigger organizations like uh, KISER or KFAS, for example. I uh, just remembered that in one of the leads that we got, it was for Raudatine Water, where they had uh, we had a few consultation sessions, in fact, with them to uh, provide some branding for their new, uh, for example, uh, water lines. Such kind of uh, collaborations could happen by having a med mediators, you know, that could be like uh, KFAS or KISER or other organizations. So these attempts will definitely help, uh, uh, for example, holding uh, uh, mutual seminars, inviting guest speakers from both sides, uh, 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 activating internship programs, uh, site visits, 
this is uh, gonna definitely build a lot of uh, uh, bridges to uh, explore uh, opportunities of uh, collaboration on uh, research. As Mr. Sultan said, it could be probably more interesting for the engineering or the technical uh, part of it, or from the business side of it, which is you know uh, uh, related to the challenges of sustainability, which is definitely most companies are uh, suffering now uh, following the uh, pandemic. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Sultan, how can we make uh, build bridges between the research sector and the uh, industrial sector? Yes, that's, uh, I second the opinion of Professor Sam. That's a very good uh, uh, question. And I also second his opinion about ongoing sort of activities and committees that the private uh, sector would sit in such committees along with um, research institutes. Uh, these will definitely build the bridges and narrow such gaps. Uh, however, there is also a social responsibility by the private industry in general uh, and R&D institutes and what have you. I probably touched upon this earlier on in today's lecture, which is uh, creating uh, markets and creating new sort of job opportunities uh, with specialized uh, interest in, 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 in mind, uh, which R&D institutes could definitely contribute towards that. Uh, not to mention the fact that laboratories could be sponsored with the aim of sponsoring R&D rather than one specific project, meaning a private company could uh, help build a lab that's a generic, uh, generic purpose lab in a certain area, uh, say in uh, phase equilibria lab or uh, an organic uh, wet chemistry lab. Uh, so anything that comes out of that lab is shared with that private company, discussed and see, uh, take it as a seed to develop technology, for example, or a seed or a concept to develop a, an R&D project between those two partners, which in this case would be the R&D Institute and the private industry company. Uh, so that's one way to do it as well. And there is always, always the building trust sort of relationship. If one success story is there to build on, uh, believe you me, uh, work will come naturally between those two bodies, uh, the private industry in general or the private sector in general, and the R&D Institute or the academic institute uh, as it were. Uh, so that, I believe, is also a very important angle in building trust between uh, those entities, whether in technical services or consultancies. Thank you, Dr. Sultan. Dr. Sultan, you talked about um, uh, building laboratories. Would that be considered an example of uh, research collaborations uh, between the research sector and the industrial sector? And what are the opportunities and benefits in building research collaborations specifically? Yes, well, I wouldn't consider it to be just research when uh, a lab is sponsored or built with the private uh, sector. Uh, it's much more than that. That lab is aimed mm -hmm. to be um, a more of a generic purpose lab. So that lab could serve that industry directly, for example, uh, it could go towards other projects that this industry are uh, uh, interested in. Say it's a, a plastic bottles company and they sponsor a lab uh, to have a better sort of uh, a mechanical profile for their product. Uh, so that lab could serve them and other purposes as well. So those uh, results that come out of the lab will always be sort of communicated between those two bodies and uh, this relationship is developed into a project or this relationship is developed into uh, uh, developing an actual technology that would be uh, hosted between these two bodies and bit by bit it could be le leading also to technology transfer to the private uh, sector in general uh, in terms of uh, proprieties and intellectual property i mean uh, a research fund uh, could be uh, a fund that the private industry are interested in solving a problem or doing research with a certain research objective or a theme in mind. Uh, so that's more of a direct approach 
but I feel mm -hmm. that that uh, sort of relationship is uh, a very short-lived one. So once the project is over, that relationship uh, dies and uh, dims out with time, which is something I personally don't like. I like the channel to be always open between the both uh, between both bodies. So the private industry could always benefit from the R&D side and the R&D side will always have a sustainable sort of uh, actual industrial fund rather than just uh, doing research uh, with the aim of doing research. Uh, I'm always against yes. shelf research or uh, uh, non-applied research and the private sector would definitely be a major uh, stakeholder in, 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 in such uh, situations thank you dr sultan dr sam what do you think of research collaboration uh, between uh, both uh, parties involved i really like the point mentioned by dr sultan because i really felt it through our collaboration with the industry honestly uh, a successful collaboration starts from the industry because they feed you with a, a challenge i call it a problem this is where it has a, their own interest. In fact, they find a solution actually for it. So if say, look, this is the fund either given by the private sector itself or by a third party and say, do me a research on that and uh, let us in fact cooperate on, on finding a solution for it. This will touch the industry uh, uh, directly and will provide direct benefits. So the value is maximized through the initiation of these, in fact, collaborations through by looking at the industry itself. So why should I initiate a research that may not be applied in our context in Kuwait, for example, or, you know, in the region? Well, uh, it could be yes. more interesting if it is started from the industry itself. So I'd say like uh, Delphi technique that we explore what's happening in the industry by having the right uh, uh, communication channels with them. Uh, with uh, the output of these will say, look, we've got these kind of uh, uh, challenges or problems or projects that we can work on them. And this is where we can allocate task forces or uh, uh, teams from the uh, academia to work with the industry closely. And as Dr. Sultan, it will be much celebrated when we see successful you know, uh, outputs coming out of it. Indeed, thank you. Now, the focus of this talk has been mainly what can the private sector benefit from uh, the research uh, or academic sectors, but what about the other way around? What is the benefit for the academia or research? And I think you touched on it throughout the talk, but if we can focus it now on uh, what is the benefit for the academic and research sector from the private sector or the industrial sector? I guess this question for me, I think. <laughs> oh, sure, Dr. Sam. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, <laughs> look, I think, uh, uh, I feel the industry is more dynamic. Dynamic in its challenges, dynamic in its uh, uh, renewable uh, realities that you can come across, dynamic in uh, the new innovations that come across. So everything is changing around you. So definitely it's a more enjoyable environment to work with. Academia on the other side, it's, uh, uh, it's more systematic in the way actually they progressed. We are driven by uh, uh, maintaining the right learning objectives and uh, uh, maintaining also teaching standards, high teaching standards. So this is the focus, you know, to maintain an accredited uh, or a respected academic body. But when you uh, measure to the other side and say, why not uh, injecting a new blood of uh, life that you can see what you study uh, in practical life. And this is, I see the joy uh, within our students and also within our staff uh, when they start working on a real project and say, ha, this is what we studied, this is what we see, a direct application for it. So definitely uh, it will uh, revitalize the, the education process. You now tell me, uh, Mr. Muhammad, what's the benefit of uh, teaching someone business? Uh, without knowing how to start a business, how to manage a business uh, effectively, for example. Likewise, when you uh, teach someone engineering and all the experience is got through, in fact, laboratory testing or within labs and, you know, premises of the uni. Well, in fact, you need them to apply it practically 
that knowledge. See, uh, the ACK has uh, its own uh, school of aviation. And aviation, for example, is an example, uh, is an example for uh, an applied, you know, uh, science. So you cannot, in fact, uh, uh, graduate from aviation without having at least two years of certification as a ground engineer or with some of the airlines. So by partnering with Lufthansa, for example, like to uh, have the uh, services, technical services uh, or maintenance uh, offered actually or trained for our uh, students. This is where we see that they have applied their uh, knowledge directly, in fact, on, on campus. Now, as you probably know, ACK has a huge or a large, in fact, uh, hangar where it has a real plane and they, in fact, actually work on the maintenance and simulation on spot. So that could be one way to uh, uh, communicate, in fact, the experience in a way that the student is uh, ready to work, you know, in the market when they graduate. Excellent point. Uh, Dr. Sultan, um, what do you think of uh, the benefit to the other side now, to the research institute, uh, such as Kisser? Yes, well, I believe that the benefit is actually more of a horse and carriage sort of approach. It comes in both ways. Uh, we've probably already touched upon some of the benefits to the other, uh, to the private industry yes. in general. Uh, when it comes to R&D institutes uh, and academic institutes, as it were, uh, there is always the question of sustaining yourself to run the actual science. Uh, the private industry could definitely help in that in, in terms of funds generation or sponsoring certain projects or sponsoring certain technologies within that uh, R&D Institute. So that's one major element that will stem various sort of uh, uh, elements from it. Uh, for example, if uh, the private industry was to uh, fund a project uh, you would create uh, also opportunities within the R&D Institute of creating jobs, having training programs dedicated uh, towards that uh, project, uh, opening the channels with uh, studentships and uh, the academic circles in general. Uh, not to mention the fact that there is always the international sort of exposure of that private industry through the R&D Institute. So the R&D Institute now is an internationally recognized body, uh, a certified laboratory or a certified R&D body that could run such experiments. Uh, the third point I would like to focus on when it comes to this relationship, but uh, with emphasis on the R&D Institute, is the ongoing applied training programs uh, and the services between uh, both. So uh, within your R&D Institute, say you are running uh, a project that's sponsored from the private industry, uh, you can always develop training programs uh, for your uh, colleagues, for students, for co-workers. Uh, that could also lead to uh, a number of programs that could also sharpen skills and uh, reskill some of the employees as well in that uh, R&D Institute. And that's all thanks to that uh, R&D fund that originated from the private uh, sector. So uh, yeah, in, 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 in summary or in brief, I would say it's definitely a horse and carriage relationship and both uh, benefit out of it immensely. Thank you, Dr. Sultan. We have reached to the end of the talk, but before we conclude, I would like um, your opinion, uh, our panel, on what advice would you like to convey to encourage uh, collaboration uh, research? Uh, Dr. Sultan, do you have any advice for our listeners? Uh, well, basically, um, R&D institutes, academic um, bodies in general, whether it is in Kuwait uh, or in the region, uh, in generic terms, uh, face a lot of problems on a day-to-day -day when it comes to some of the uh, bureaucratic channels, uh, the auditing channels, or what have you. Uh, R&D and science is not run uh, like a day-to-day -day business. Uh, it's science. Uh, results uh, are not an, uh, ex expected. 
as it uh, as they are uh, things are not anticipated to a T uh, hence the term scientific research otherwise it would be uh, more of a, a touch and go uh, sort of uh, a guessing game sometimes so uh, that needs to be understood by the various sort of bodies and there is also the major uh, sort of uh, angle to that we have a lot of uh, authorities, uh, governmental bodies, private bodies as well uh, in Kuwait or in the region in general uh, that might take a more sort of uh, an, an, a hands-on approach to nourish such a relationship uh, without naming specific names, but definitely uh, some of the technologies that come from the R&D Institute could be applied directly in Kuwaiti industry, for example. Uh, that bridge could be taken or that uh, could be initiated by a number of authorities and bodies within the country. Uh, so that's something uh, to think of uh, in terms of food for thought. Uh, one last thing I'll probably emphasize on uh, is um, R&D is quite essential for uh, uh, technology development, technology transfer as well. Uh, not everything that's successful on a one scale, say on the bench, is always successful in industry. Hence, there is a scale-up operation. So that is a relationship that needs to be taken into consideration by specialists. Uh, everyone to their own uh, major and everyone to their own speciality. Uh, so that is also one uh, angle I would like to probably uh, conclude on. And... Uh, by the end of this talk, I would like to thank you and thank uh, the co-speaker uh, uh, as well, uh, Professor Sam, and you, Dr. Mohammed, and the Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Sciences for providing such an opportunity. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sultan. Dr. Sam, what advice would you like to convey to encourage collaboration? I think Dr. Sultan made the point, and I can only add two more points to it. So. Uh, the industry has a lot of data generated on a daily basis uh, based on their processes, uh, industrial activities, uh, you name it. So if this data was shared with the academia, I bet you there would be a lot of interesting uh, opportunities to, to look at this data from different perspective and generate uh, many useful uh, conclusions, I'll probably say uh, recommendations to the industry. Second, now it's a trend, uh, not only in Kuwait or in the Gulf or uh, in the Middle East, but worldwide, going for entrepreneurship, which is usually associated with innovation. And innovation, uh, now it's, uh, it's a game changer. See, we are in the, in the area, a time where we have, in fact, to look at uh, differentiation in order to survive. So uh, with uh, product process innovation, uh, we can do a lot through uh, the uh, student, I'll probably say interaction or uh, uh, centers, innovation centers that are adopted by universities that they can in fact uh, communicate and uh, build bridges in fact with uh, the industry. Definitely they would have a lot to uh, share with the industry and that creates a lot of potential uh, value for both. Much appreciated, uh, Dr. Sultan and Dr. Sam. Uh, thank you very much. And we will now head over to the questions from our audience. If you allow me a second or two to uh, set up the questions. <clears throat> okay. I see I have, uh, let me think. There's a question from Basma and another question from the same person also um, uh, directed to Dr. Sultan is, um, uh, do you find Kuwaiti companies resistant to um, investing in R&D projects in collaborations with the academic sector? And this question is for both of our guests. And uh, the second question, um, um, let me try to... Uh, the second question is directed to Dr. Sultan, is do you find it difficult uh, to get companies uh, to work with researchers? Um, thank you very much, um, uh, 
uh, Miss Best before that uh, question. It's a very good question, and uh, I do not want to step on any toes. But uh, uh, regarding the first part of that, it's a two-parter. Uh, some majority of companies in Kuwait, uh, I wouldn't say resistant, but they need to understand the benefits they get out of funding uh, R&D projects in general. So that takes time and takes patience uh, from you personally as a researcher. Uh, as I said during the talk, not every story is a rosy, successful sort of uh, story, but I wouldn't say resistant uh, as much as it is uh, a question of time and investing time uh, uh, and developing that more and more uh, with sort of technical meetings, not meetings in general, but technical meetings, demonstrations, and explaining the benefits that the private industry might gain from uh, such a collaboration. Uh, is it difficult or not? That's the second part. Uh, it is uh, not difficult because basically you're enjoying what you're doing, uh, at least uh, in my case. But executing R&D is laborious rather than uh, difficult. It's time uh, consuming. Uh, it needs a certain way of managing uh, things. As I said during the talk as well, uh, some results uh, to get to that certain point need a lot of time and uh, lab work and pilot plant developing or technology transfer or technology implementation it takes time. So that also needs to be taken in consideration. So I would use the term laborious, laborious rather than uh, 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 difficult. And uh, Dr. Sam, do you think Kuwait com companies are resistant to R&D? R which I don't think should they should be, but... I will react. make it brief. So I will look at it from yes. the business perspective, which is related to the yes. tough competition companies are in fact experiencing and the shrinking economy in general that is in fact related to the pandemic. So. Uh, uh, I wouldn't hide a secret or uh, saying that only big companies would probably be uh, uh, able to afford funding, in fact, or allocating funds uh, to mutual collaborations. So in this uh, uh, context, the role of the government as well as uh, uh, big organizations that they can, in fact, support or be, be funding, in fact, uh, uh, research uh, come into that picture. So uh, other companies, for example, medium to small operators, uh, they are struggling to maintain uh, their presence in the market to keep sustainability. So definitely they looking for more support in order to differentiate themselves and survive. Uh, second is the culture. So definitely we need to look at uh, uh, infusing a culture that is uh, uh, more optimistic when they look at the collaboration with academic uh, or academia. And that basically would uh, make the point, in fact, of uh, of that collaboration. Great. Um, the third question um, is um, from Saad. And I'll you the question on that. It says, why GCC countries lack research cooperation and research mobility across the GCC countries? Based on your experience, both of you, Dr. Sam and Dr. Sultan, is this actually the case? Do, do the GCC countries lack research corporations? If so, why? I would like to uh, start with Dr. Sultan, if you have any knowledge or experience regarding the regional um, uh, col collaboration. Uh, I personally have collaborated with uh, international and uh, regional bodies uh, in R&D. Uh, that's a very good question and a very good uh, point to emphasize as well. Um, when it comes to international collaboration, each country, each institute, sometimes within a certain country, uh, would have their own frame uh, of legalities and uh, management circles and management channels. Uh, those need to be taken into consideration. For example, some proposals or some uh, research projects would be uh, 
uh, reviewed and refereed and uh, would stay at a certain pipeline for a year sometimes. Uh, it's not the case in country X where it wants to collaborate with country Y. So that channel could break very easily. Uh, that also being said, it's the same situation sometimes with the private industry. As I mentioned, the timelines differ immensely uh, between R&D and academia on one hand and the private industry on the, other, uh, on the second. Uh, in more specific terms with GCC countries, as the uh, gentleman that asked the question, I believe his name is Saad, uh, GCC countries, Sad, uh, yes. including Kuwait, Yes, um, GCC countries, including Kuwait, are quite uh, strong in relationships when it comes to uh, technical committees. Use uh, there is always the question of making such agreements uh, effective in real life. Uh, research also needs a certain research objective and certain theme. Uh, so that's always very hard to tackle and uh, not just sort of uh, uh, just keeping it in the air. I would like to collaborate with uh, country X or country Y, so I will just uh, develop an idea. No, it doesn't come that way. Uh, uh, the right way to see it is I would like to collaborate with that institute in that country because of a shared experience or a shared technical relationship that we get from. Uh, that could be extended to studentships and postdocs and postgraduates as well, by the way. Uh, one last thing uh, I would like to uh, conclude with is basically the angle of work in a different country uh, or a different uh, or in a laboratory in a different region all the way uh, in a different continent even sometimes that could happen and we have uh, a number of uh, success stories in that uh, perspective where uh, we have some work in the US or Canada or uh, the UK and it is a two-way relationship where the work is shared and the results and the fruits of such collaboration is also shared uh, that could be taken uh, as a success model uh, for GCC countries easily, especially uh, given uh, closer relations and stronger even relations, uh, not only in geography, but also in so many other things. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sultan. Uh, Dr. Sam, I have a question uh, specific uh, towards, uh, specifically to you uh, from Mr. Mohammed. It says, um, let me view the question and I'll read it out loud as well. I am working to control insect pests with using drone technology and nanotechnology, but lacking industrial collaboration. Please, uh, Dr. Sam, can you give me some advice to make uh, uh, my collaboration, to make collaboration with the industry? Uh, it looks like an interesting topic, as he said here, insect pests with yes, using <laughs> drones. In fact, on that one yes. here, uh, looking at what's the way just to, to start working on that way, is there an innovative uh, uh, feature of, of that uh, uh, project that he's working on that he can uh, make it uh, uh, visible, you know, to the industry that, yes, I've got something that adds value to that, to the industry where we can collaborate. I think if he works on the points of difference, we call it, or differentiating factors, what value it's being added through that pest control, then he will find someone to, in fact, uh, you know, collaborate on. I, I see it more like promoting the project rather than, in fact, uh, uh, waiting for someone to adopt it. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Dr. Sultan, another question specifically to you. Uh, from uh, Mr. Tamer, what programs do you encourage the private sector to invest within your domain? Uh, definitely nowadays and given the pandemic situation, um, definitely um, medical applications and waste management. 
meaning how can we valorize waste with the aim of product development for the medical sector. We've recently registered with the United States Trademark and Patent Office uh, a patent and uh, an intellectual property uh, actually uh, targeting that uh, specific uh, 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 topic uh, where we are trying at the moment to develop uh, an antiviral and anti-COVID uh, surface from waste materials. Uh, so that would be something very important, uh, not to mention the fact that the energy basket in Kuwait is not diverse. Uh, we have, you can ask any chemical engineer, anyone who's working in uh, applied sciences, he will tell you that the energy basket in Kuwait needs to be diversified. We have a problem of uh, uh, diversifying our uh, GDP income in general. Uh, so waste to fuel is a major, major sort of fund that the private industry uh, could tackle, especially in Kuwait. So if they would sponsor that uh, or sponsor in that area they could lead to benefits to the country in general and benefits to both the industry and r d uh, institute and academic institute in general as well thank you dr sultan and a question um, from madari and this is a general quest question for our panel hello um, I wanted to ask about the negative aspects of private sector, private sector getting involved in academic research and prospective to ownership of research as well as censorship. Have you encouraged issues uh, from that aspect? Dr. Sam. Sorry, the line I'll was interrupted. Uh, so if I can yes, ask the question I'll, again. Uh, sure. Uh, it's from Adari. Uh, she's asking, um, hello, I wanted to ask about what would be the negative aspects of the private sectors getting involved in academic research, mainly uh, in the perspective of ownership of research as well as uh, censorship. Have you, uh, have you enco encountered issues like that in the, uh, in the past? I can't say negative aspects, in fact, uh, uh, for the industry to be involved in academic research. It's more like I see challenges in terms of, for example, uh, getting it uh, technically right uh, th uh, through the academic channels. Uh, when you talk about research, you, you, you're talking about variables, uh, relationships, uh, tests, uh, mathematical models, uh, statistics. Uh, authenticity of data, sample collection, th these kind of things uh, should be in fact looked at uh, carefully in order to get genuine results. So if uh, data was not collected properly, if there are uh, or not in fact uh, 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 representing the right sample, you will not get the right results. So I, I see that probably be a major aspect or negative aspect if you, if you want to call it as what she said. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sultan, do you think there are any negative aspects in collaborations uh, between uh, research institutions and private sector? Yes, well, um, what would I see as negative, probably Professor Sam wouldn't do so. Uh, what would you see, Dr. Mohammed, as a positive? I personally might uh, see it as a major with, uh, drawback in a certain project. So uh, when it comes uh, with the private industry or governmental bodies in general, just any R&D fund, the transparency at the beginning should be uh, at a very high level, uh, meaning that uh, what the company or the private company is expecting or should be expecting should be very much so clarified in writing. Uh, this goes all the way down to MOUs and uh, IPs and uh, technology development within that project or laboratory. So uh, there wouldn't be a catch-22 situation anyway during the relationship, as it were. Uh, one more thing, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, the person who asked uh, is trying to say is uh, uh, if the private industry sort of are more uh, negative towards some R&D works uh, in general. Uh, the answer would be no. Uh, private industry are not sort of uh, 
they do not possess a negative uh, spirit towards R&D. As I said earlier on, uh, I believe private industry have a responsibility towards uh, the society. They can sponsor R&D, they can sponsor jobs, they can create jobs, create technologies, uh, and definitely help in that angle. But transparency from both sides should be uh, at maximum, especially at the beginning. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sultan. And we have come to the end of the talk, and I do apologize for, the, uh, for our guests for not uh, being able to address all of their questions. Um, we are limited with time. I would like to thank our panel, Dr. Sultan and Dr. Sam. Thank you very much. And to our audience, thank you all for your attention and engagement. We hope that you will manage, that we hope that we manage to address the issues on the topic and we look forward to uh, see more of the industry university collaborations in the future. Thank you all. Take care and good night. Thank you. Thank you.